My small biogas plant produces around 200 liters of methane each day using just a few kitchen scraps and some green waste. It is made from cheap plumbing parts and I can generate my own energy continuously and safely without much effort. Any design is conceivable, from a simple experiment using a plastic bottle to a cubic meter sized system for supplying an entire household. With my self-built Stirling combined heat and power plants and an enlarged fermentation tank, I want to support our solar system during periods of low sunshine and become independent of energy suppliers. In the fermentation tank, the daily substrate supply is broken down by bacteria, mainly into methane, carbon dioxide and a fertile fermentation residue. I purify the biogas in several simple steps and then collect it in a suitable container. Methane is flammable, explosive and a harmful greenhouse gas, so it must be handled with great care. Biogas is produced through anaerobic digestion, which is a process by which bacteria break down organic materials in the absence of oxygen within a fermentation tank. The process goes through four phases, each involving different bacteria. Hydrolysis, complex organic substances are broken down into simple molecules. Second, acidogenesis, the breakdown products are acidified. Third, acetogenesis, the organic acids are further converted. And fourth, methanogenesis, the methane formation. The entire process requires a constant temperature of 30 to 40 degrees Celsius and a neutral pH value of around 6.5 to 7.5. The heart of the system consists of a container for the fermentation mass with connections for the substrate supply, the gas outlet and the fermentation residue drain. Select the appropriate size of container depending on your requirements. For initial experiments, a large plastic bottle fitted with a valve for gas extraction and an airtight balloon to collect the gas will suffice. Any size is possible, from single containers to several IBCs or water tanks. White neck barrels with clamp rings and rubber seals are very practical and can often be purchased cheaply secondhand from fruit producers. As a general rule, in an effective system, the container's filling volume can be used as an estimate of the daily gas production. Robust and practical for the inlet and outlet are PVC waste pipes, which I have generously glued with tank bushings. Once all connections have been made, it is essential to carry out a leak test on the gas outlet. To do this, seal the supply pipes with disposable rubber gloves and insulating tape or similar. For the starter mixture, I filled my 200 liter fermentation container about halfway with fresh horse manure and then three quarters full with clean water and mix it well. Cow dung, manure and other types of animal dung are also suitable. Tap water with a high chlorine content should be left open for a few days and generally speaking, gently warming it up just before filling helps to speed up the starting process. The ideal location is sunny and as warm as possible, as the temperature in my fermentation container is always too low. Ideally, the starter mixture should be lukewarm. Use it to fill the fermenter to 80% capacity, then seal it airtight immediately. Fermentation residue will soon start to drip steadily from the lower outlet or flow during feeding. It is very important to close the gas outlet or connect a possibly temporary gas storage tank to which, ideally, the current gas production can be directly read. Depending on the conditions, the fermentation process will take a few days or weeks to begin and produce the first combustible biogas. For the daily flame tests, I use a safety device that cools and extinguishes any flashbacks. As soon as the first gas development occurs, you can gradually begin adding substrate on a daily basis. At the beginning, the biogas produced has a very low methane content, which increases over time under the right conditions. If no noticeable gas production occurs even after approximately two or three weeks, troubleshooting is required. In my experience, it is usually a seal or connection that is leaking, allowing the gas to escape unnoticed. For permanent gas production, a continuous, preferably daily supply of substrate is necessary. Almost any green waste, kitchen and food scraps and animal manure are suitable as a substrate. Woody and straw-like materials as well as leaves are unsuitable and it is best to use a varied mixture. 
as a general rule, anything that can be eaten in the broadest sense can also be used as a substrate. The substrate mass is mixed with water in roughly equal proportions. Its fine grinding enables it to decompose significantly faster and makes fillings through the long feeding tube much easier. The optimum hydraulic retention time of the substrate is approximately 30 to 60 days, depending on temperature and composition. A fermentation volume of, for example, 100 liters with a hydraulic retention time of 50 days then requires approximately 100 liters divided by 50 days equals 2 liters of fresh substrate per day. Feeding a little less, which only leads to slightly lower gas production, makes more sense than constant overfeeding, which disrupts the bacterial balance and leads to hyperacidity. The pH value should be in the neutral range of 6.5 to 7.5. The C2N ratio describes the proportions of carbon and nitrogen in plant parts and should be in the range of 20 to 30 to 1. You can make a science out of the individual parameters, but at the end of the day, you feed whatever you have available. A diary recording the substrate quantity and type, temperature and amount of gas produced is very helpful in understanding the fermentation process. With time, you will develop a good understanding of your plant. With a little observation and common sense, it is not difficult to feed it correctly. It's a bit like a Tamagotchi. Stable biotic gas formation produces a gas mixture of approximately 50 to 70 percent methane, 30 to 40 percent carbon dioxide, less than 0.3 percent hydrogen sulfide, and trace amounts of nitrogen, oxygen, and ammonia. Of these, only methane is of interest to us, and we want to remove the carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide as effectively as possible. Carbon dioxide takes up valuable storage space and reduces combustibility, which is clearly visible in the orange color of the flame. Hydrogen sulfide has an unpleasant smell, is irritating and harmful to health, but above all it is corrosive, which can prove fatal for internal combustion generators. Depending on the type of use, gas purification is very important and can be achieved using simple means, unless natural gas quality is required. First, I pass the biogas through a calcium hydroxide solution for carbon dioxide separation and general purification. This is followed by a stage with desiccant and, for larger amounts of moisture, an additional upstream water separator from the pneumatic area. I find mineral catalytor to be an inexpensive and effective desiccant and with a top layer of activated carbon you can also filter out harmful substances and odors. Finally, loosely packed rusted steel wool is added to separate the hydrogen sulfide as effectively as possible. The respective cleaning agents must be checked regularly and repla replaced when saturated. Plastic water filters are very practical as they can be easily screwed together in series and filled. With these measures I have never noticed excessive smells or corrosion but cleaning can of course still be optimized. The biogas produced must be collected and stored safely after cleaning. Storage in compressed gas cylinders during the summer for use in winter is also possible, but involves greater effort and losses. My gas storage tank consists of a white-necked barrel filled to 80% with water, into which another barrel with a slightly smaller diameter is inserted upside down. The gas from the cleaning system bubbles through the water into the collection barrel. This cleans the gas again, but it also absorbs some moisture. On top of the lid is a shut-off valve with a hose connection to which the flame arrester is attached. Weighted down to build up pressure and secured against tipping over with side guides, the collection barrel rises depending on the fill level. If higher pressures are required, an explosion-proof pump is essential. Producing your own small amount of biogas can be a very satisfying project, but it requires careful consideration, particularly for larger plants. But when everything runs well, you are rewarded with an astonishing amount of self-generated energy. In many videos on my YouTube channel, I demonstrate how to use methane as effectively as possible, featuring my homemade sterling combined heat and power plants and other projects. I have dismantled the system now and am planning a larger, modular version. This will generate enough gas to make us completely independent of energy suppliers using our solar plant and Stirling engines. 
This video is based on my article for Make magazine, which contains lots of extra information. If you can read German and are interested in biogas plants, look out for the Make magazine and news agents next year. That's why, as an exception, this video will also be published in German next week. If you want to know where my strange pronunciation comes from and want to hear me speak my native language, you can take a look. A special thank you goes to my channel members and supporters on Patreon. You motivate me greatly and make so much possible. As always, I welcome criticism, suggestions and help in the comments here on YouTube or on Discord. Thank you very much for your interest.